Hello, welcome to College for the Culture, a place for us to learn and thrive. It's Rachel here, and I'm back with another episode. Happy New Year, everyone. We're in 2022. Exciting. New year, new us. Or if you want to be the same, that's okay too. Whatever you like. Um, I know it's been a while. It's been a while since our last episode. Um, yeah, you know, holidays, finals, you already know the deal. So we had to deal with that before we came back. But we're back better than ever, ready for more advice, more content. And today we are talking about, okay, so it's college decision time. I know we're in this period where everyone is like finishing up applying to their schools or they already finished. And now you're just like this weird, like purgatory, like you're like waiting for your results to come out. And as you're doing that, you know, people are starting to hear their early decisions and stuff like that. And that can become a little toxic. You know, like you're hearing people talk in the hallways or during lunch, like, oh, this person got accepted, this person got rejected, or you're seeing on their Instagram story, like, oh my God, I got accepted to my first choice or congrats to my bestie. She got into like the same school as me, we live or whatever. Like you're hearing all these things. And then sometimes it can get a little, it can get a little it can get a little messy. People can get a little rude. People can be talking shit about you behind your back or talking shit about other people. Like, "Mm, did you hear? Mm, They were rejected. Like, it's such a shame. Uh, I mean, they didn't have a chance anyway. Like, stupid shit like that. Like, you know, people just talking. So all of this could be really harmful to your mental health. I know it was for me when I was in high school, senior year. Um, hearing all these different things while you're just still waiting, sitting there like waiting, or maybe you already received some rejections already, or, you know, so you're already just in a weird mood and having all these things thrown at you um, is a lot. And no one really talks about that because I don't know why, but no one really talks about that, but it's something everyone experiences. So we're going to talk about that, the toxicity of college decision time and how to protect your mental health. And to talk with me about this is my beautiful, amazing friend, um, Juliet Daniel. She is a freshman at U Chicago, and yeah, she's gonna talk about it. Us. So, hello, Juliet. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing good. How are you? I am amazing. You're here. <laughs> New Year, sun shining today in NYC. We're excited. Um, so I'm going to start just to something like, so for, tell the people, for those who don't know, like a little bit about the background of like the high school you went to, like, what's the high school you went to? What was the vibe for you when you were in high school? Okay. So I went to the Bronx high school of science. Um, I think it's pretty well known, at least on the East coast. It's one of the eight specialized high schools of New York city. Um, it's known for needing a test called the SHSAT to get in. That in itself is all sorts of rigor, stress. Um, Tens of thousands of kids take it every year, only for a couple hundred seats at each school. And because of the nature of the admissions, I think that definitely carried on to the entire experience of Bronx Science. Um, I personally did not like it at all, and I make it very well known. Um, It was at Bronx Science that I was first introduced to like rigorous academics, um, but also like a lot of intense stress and like toxicity, a lot of competition. It was very cutthroat. It was kind of like, we're all just like trying to compete with each other, I guess, because in the end it was all about college, college, college for all of us because Bronx Science is known for sending a lot of kids to like top colleges. So yeah, that was a very interesting experience, especially during college app season. Ooh, I can only imagine. Mm. You are strong because it could have been me. All right. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Bronx High School of Science, like the specialized high schools, they're like the public IVs, but high school version. It's like that Um, for those who aren't in New York. So it's definitely a lot, you know, a lot of people, a lot of competition. Everyone's really smart, but, you know, it's like you're like, what is that phrase? Like you're like a little fish in a big pond, in a big pond like that. So I can only imagine, um, but you're out of there. So happy for you. <laughs> um, anyways, 
how was it like, how was it like, you know, being in high school, it's your senior year um, during that college decision time period? Uh, tell us the vibe, paint a picture for us. Well, I think like for my year, it was really unique because we were online that entire year. Um, I think the class of 2020, they like, they went online after college season and then class of 2022, they're currently in person for a lot of schools. So like my year, we were all just like online during that entire process. We didn't really have guidance counselors. I mean, we still had access to our guidance counselors, but it was just weird. Like people are used to just dropping into the guidance counselor's office to talk to anyone if they need something. Like you couldn't really do that during that year. Um, so for me, like I had to rely a lot on my older friends for like advice. I watched a lot of YouTube videos to like kind of get me through that period because I didn't have like the support of like teachers and counselors and stuff like I would if things were in person. Um, because we were online, that like general sense of stress and toxicity definitely was less because like that thing of like, oh, people are gossiping in the hallways, like between periods, like that didn't happen, um, which was nice. But somehow the stress was still there. Like it was actually kind of crazy. Like it would be like Zoom class and you could feel the tension coming out of everyone's screen somehow because we were all waiting for like the same school on the same day. Like it was still really bad. And I think like for some people, they felt like they felt that like they felt almost like a sense of loneliness. Like, well, now I'm online. I don't have my friends to like lean on in these times. But for me, I tried to use the online experience to my advantage the best I could like when I was stressed I tried to stay away from social media as much as possible um and kind of just like turn everything off because like being an online school that's the one advantage like you get to physically like tune out of everything school related because your entire school experience is online so it was kind of like a weird battle of balancing the pros and cons of being online while also dealing with the stress of college apps Oh, wow. Yeah, you, you reminded me. I'm like, wow, you were like online. Like, so that's like even I don't think anyone could even not a lot of people could relate to that experience. But yeah. I could totally see the stresses like, OK, you're in the same Zoom class, but you know, there's like other people that apply to the same school as you. So everyone's just kind of looking at each other like and not paying <laughs> attention to the professor. Yeah. And social media was probably a lot more intense than before, because that's all you had. You couldn't really see each other. So then you just saw every two seconds someone say, I got it, I got it, <laughs> yeah. you know, so I totally get that. And yeah, of course, not having the college counselors or guidance counselors um, right there, like accessible to you, you got to be waiting for their emails and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I could totally see all of that being very stressful um, to the mental. So I totally get that. I totally get that. And if you, anyone is going through that right now, if you're back online for some reason, it's going to be okay. You know, Julia got through it. You could get through it too. <laughs> so um, now that we tainted a picture of the vibe that you had during high school, um, especially you're a woman of color. Um, people can't see your face, but you're a black woman. <laughs> <laughs> you're a black woman. And <laughs> um, I'm curious your perspective as a black woman. I know Bronx High School of Science is um, predominantly Asian. Um, there's not really a lot of black people in there. Um, and when you were like hearing your decisions, like when you were getting things back, like you got into Chicago and a lot of other like great places, like how was that like? Did you get some like pushback, like negative pushback from um other people, or was it pretty calm for you? Yeah, so um, like you said, there are like no black people ever on science, so I think like the few of us, like there is definitely like a lot of pressure on us um, to be like the representatives of all black people. Like if we don't go to the top schools, you know, then people are going to continue all these stereotypes about black people. And so I definitely did feel that pressure. Um, and there was a lot of times where I was like, wow, I'm going to be the person that everybody expects to get in and then doesn't get in anywhere. Um, but then like, thankfully, like I did get into a lot of places and I didn't really want to be the person who was posting on my main so I was posting things on my fence though, because my fence has always been like a very special place for me. Like I always keep it really small. Um, like I post like all sorts of stuff. I just try and keep it like a place where I can be authentically myself on social media, but that's definitely not what I do on my main. And so my fence is just like a close group of small friends where I just post whatever's going on. 
Um, and at the time I was also dealing with a lot of stress from my parents, which was actually the primary source of my college stress. So I guess like all those acceptances, I was trying to make the most of them, even though I was really unhappy during that period. And so I was posting on social media, kind of just like trying to show like my friends who've been supporting me, like, look guys, I did it. Um, and like, even though I'm really stressed out right now, like there's good things that are happening to me. Um, and for the most part, like people were really supportive, but then there were some people who were salty, like this one kid who doesn't even follow my Finsta, he like, he's just friends with someone who's on my Finsta. He came for me and he was like, you know, you're always talking about mental health and all this stuff, but then you're posting all of your acceptances on your Finsta. And I was like, oh, well, yeah, I posted my Finsta because mm. that's my Finsta. Like, I can post whatever I want on there. He's like, yeah, but you're just hurting the people who are closest to you. And I was like, whoa, like, you're talking really bold right now for someone who's not even friends with you like that. Right. Um, and it was really interesting because later on, like, a lot of his friends were getting into some really great schools and he was quiet. He himself was going to a good school and all his friends are posting him on their mains. He was quiet. So I just mm. thought that was really interesting that he came for me like that. Um, but yeah, that was mostly like the one bad experience I had. Um, I was like really lucky to not have received any racist criticism. But unfortunately, I have heard of that happening several times at Bronx Science. I think for me, it was just because like for a lot of high school, I established myself like I, my only personality was school, basically. So like there was never really any question um, about like my success. But for people who were more multifaceted than I was, like people of color, like suddenly there was all these weird questions, like weird, like um, insinuations, like, oh, like you got into Harvard, like that's so interesting. Like my friend didn't get it, just like stuff like that. I've definitely heard of a lot of black people at Bronx Science going through stuff like that. I was just one of the lucky ones who didn't have to go through that. Oh, wow. You said a lot there. First, <laughs> the first thing, the first thing you said, like about that pressure you put on yourself like since you're the only one of the few people like black people there that pressure you put on yourself to like go to an amazing school like that has to be really good that's no one talks about that that's so real especially especially if you are a child of immigrant parents or if you're an immigrant yourself that no one is putting that on you you're putting it at yourself your parents could even be very supportive but like because you know how much your parents went through, or even if they're not immigrants, like, because you know how your whole race, like the, <laughs> like the struggles you guys, yeah. um, everyone went through, like, you feel like it's a duty for yourself um, to go to the best place possible to break those stereotypes. And that's a very heavy weight to carry because you're only one person. You getting into an amazing school is not going to solve racism. It's not going to solve it. It may feel like that to you, but racism is still going to pursue. Unfortunately, you know, you're, you know, maybe you will break a generational curse or something, but like for yourself, your family, but you're not going to. Yeah. The problems in the world are still going to arise. So please don't put that burden on yourself. Like, oh, if I don't get in, I just disgraced everyone, you know? And there's actually people that their parents or friends, like, put that pressure on you. Like, you have to go here. I sent you to this school. I sent you to this country. I sent you to this place so that you could be going to the best school. And now, so you better not disgrace me. You better not do that. I've definitely (laughs) heard a lot of people say that. Not me imitating my parents right now. But (laughs) I definitely... um, I definitely heard that um, a lot from other people and even for myself. And it's a lot. It's a lot. But like, honestly, yeah, don't put that pressure on yourself. You know, a lot of the college process is you can't even control it. Like you can only do your best and then just wait and see what happens. So don't feel like, you know, if you don't get into a top school that you're like, you're a failure because you're not. These things don't determine your character. There's like shitty people that get into the best colleges and there's amazing people that, you know, don't get to just go to like a regular regular one. And that's fine. Like that doesn't determine your value. It's all just education. We're all reading similar books. We're all doing similar classes. You know, some just are more expensive than others. Some have more prestige or maybe even a little more opportunity than others. But it's all about what you do with it. So 
that pressure is like very real and totally yeah with the parents with the friends and everything like that and what you were saying about your experience with that person he's a hater let's like okay you're posting on your fence so that's what fences are for 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 your close friends to be seeing you know how you're doing the laughs the you know crying a few times you know even the celebrations that you have that's what fences are for for those who know fence is if you're older listening it's a fake instagram where you just post like random stuff um instead of like the photo shoot-esque type things that people post on their instagram yeah. so yeah like that person's a hater if there's letting you know right now if there's close people in your life that has stuff to say about your acceptance those are not people to be around like you should not be around those people if they have talking shit about the decisions you're making like those are not your friends because real friends support you no matter what like if you get into amazing school they're cheering on even louder than you like yes i knew you could do it or whatever if you got rejected they'll be like it's okay don't even worry about them they're missing out on you you got it you got it you know so that's the point of having close friends and if you ever if you have someone in your circle that makes you feel like crap depending on the type of decision you get those are not people you should be around so just putting that out there in case someone's feeling that way especially the new year i know a lot of people like cutting people off so <laughs> Maybe this is your time. <laughs> Maybe this is your calling to do that. Um, and I know that one thing that I know you didn't experience it. I didn't experience, but I definitely heard this from many people, like say how if you're a person of color, especially if you're a black person, you and you get accepted to like a really great school, like people might talk like, oh, you got in because of affirmative action yeah. or something. I definitely heard that in my high school, like some girl um who's like a few year grades older than me like she got into Stanford and she even graduated I think last year but yeah she got into Stanford first she's a black person and I know she was talking about how when she was a senior people were like talking shit about her like oh she got in because of affirmative action like that's probably it so they could add more black people to the grade and that's not true that's not how affirmative action works it it appears like it does but it actually just benefits like white women the most even though that wasn't like the mission of it in the first place um and if you look at all these schools there's still less black people less latin latina people like less asian people white people are still the majority of these schools anyway so it doesn't it's not really breaking chains or anything so (laughs) yeah so if you're experiencing that like just know that's bullshit like they're just just being a hater or they don't know what affirmative action is um Mm -hmm. yeah so I do want to ask like more about how was your I know you talked about a little bit but more about how your mental health was personally like during that time like you're from all the experience that you just talked about in your school? Yeah, um, it was not the best. But like I said before, it wasn't necessarily because I was stressed about my apps. Like, I think I handled my apps pretty well, actually. I had a plan to, like, get everything done by December. Um, And I tried to just, like, push it out of my mind until results were coming out. And I had also gotten into, like, a few schools early anyway. So, like, I was, like, relatively lucky to not be experiencing like huge amounts of stress and anxiety about that but yeah a lot of the stress was because of my parents like placing a lot of pressure on me to choose a school that they wanted me to go to and like being a low-income student like financial aid was a big part of that decision so I was running around applying for this aid that aid filling out all these extra forms and documents and that stuff takes a toll like no one really talks about the impact that financial aid stuff has on low-income students like Literally, I have not filled up my FAFSA for next year, and I'm just procrastinating it because of how terrible it was last year. I had to fill it out like three times or something because my parents didn't know what they were doing, so I had to keep correcting them. And like, that's not their fault. Like, they're immigrants. They never really had to go through this. Um, So yeah, that kind of stress, like finances and also stress for my parents, that took a really big toll on me. And I was kind of like miserable, Uh, unfortunately. Like, even when I was getting into all these schools, like, I wasn't really enjoying them. I would just open up the portal and be like, oh, yay. And then like, go back to sleep and yeah I look back on it and that's like kind of sad I wish that I was able to enjoy that time period more because like I said like 
I was really lucky because in the end it comes down to luck really a lot of times like who's getting yeah. into top schools so like given that I was one of the lucky ones like I wish that I got to enjoy that more yeah oh my gosh I yeah I totally understand and I felt similarly like especially what you mentioned was a really good point about the financial aspect of it like you personally have to do the FAFSA yourself. You have to apply to the scholarships and be looking for them yourself. And although it may seem like everyone does that, that's not true. Like there's actually a lot of people that are just, okay, I'm an app, oh, apply, yeah, I got it. And they don't have to worry about the finances anymore. But if you're middle-class or especially if you're low income, you have to put all those things to consideration. And if your parents did not go to school in this country or have never seen a FAFSA in their life, yeah, you're going to have to be the one to be telling them what to do, telling them, please bring this form, please bring that form. And they're like, what? I don't get what that means. What does that mean? And then you have to like, explain it. Uh, and then the scholarship. And then, but they're like, you know, make sure you don't like, make sure you don't be like spending all my money. I don't want to be taking out a, a, too many loans. I don't want to be doing that. And it's just like too much anxiety. I totally get it. And it's so frustrating to deal with it yourself. Um, but I was well, something I wish I knew, like, back then at a time is that there's so many resources out there like people there that you know lay out the FAFSA that have advice on how to fill it out correctly and things like that so don't feel like you're just just fill it out and then you hope for the best you know you could look for those resources out there you could even talk to your college concert there's people out there or even the financial aid officers at these schools if there's a school you really like and you're maybe confused about how the financial aid works you can talk to them that's their job if you're not going to answer them, then they're not supposed to be there because that's your job. You're supposed to answer these questions. So don't feel like you have to figure it out by yourself. And in terms of like the scholarships and stuff like that, like you just have to take it one day at a time and do what you can. I know it may feel like a lot, like, oh my gosh, Ugh. like you have to be applying to a hundred and hope for the best. And yeah, you do have to apply to a lot, but just take it one day at a time. And there's so many other resources out there, websites out there that, have those resources but literally it's just being patient and knowing that this is temporary you're not going to be looking for all this stuff forever you know you're you have moments where you're going to enjoy your life so like don't feel like that's this is your life being an accountant for yourself or something Mm -hmm. um but I could totally understand how your mental like health was very trying the time the parents are saying one thing then your friends are saying one thing then your school um but we're going to talk about right now some tips on how to manage it. So first thing is social media, um, which you talked about was a little bit negative for you a bit. When you're seeing all that stuff on social media or you're not even just in your school, even just seeing other people or even on YouTube. I know this the college decision reaction videos, stats videos. This is how I got into Harvard. This is how I got into Columbia. And then their scores are like, <laughs> I got a 1600 and I did a million APs and that's how I got in guys. Make sure you do those things and you will get in too. Good luck. Like comment and subscribe. (laughs) Right. Like comment and subscribe. Turn on the notification. It's giving that energy, but yeah. So first with social media, like how do you, um, you know, protect your mental health when you come across those things? Cause no one will be putting trigger warnings on that stuff. Yeah, honestly, I I would say you have to know yourself, like know how sensitive you are to those things. Because like for me, um, I didn't really get like it was It's honestly upsetting whether or not like you're the kind of person who like takes those things personally. It is going to like give you some stress and anxiety seeing those things in people's story. So you have to know how much it affects you. So like when I saw that stuff, I was just like, oh, well, that's their business, I guess. And then I would like tap through. But then some people get like really personally offended and like that's their own reaction like that's valid but then if you know you're that kind of person like you should not be on social media like point blank period that's really all you can do because there's no way to avoid it like you can call out as many people as you want but there's always going to be someone who's going to post it because you literally don't know who applied where who's waiting on what schools when certain schools are coming out like it's literally going to pop up randomly so if you know you're going to get really upset you need to stay away from social media at least for a little bit of time like I really could not understand the kind of people who are upset enough to like make stories about like, oh, people need to stop posting it, but then are still on social media because you're not stopping people 
by calling people out. Like you really just can't control what people do. Um, also the Instagram mute button. People, I don't think people, yeah, people will use it, but I'd be using it left and right. Like this story annoys me mute. That person annoys me mute. Like just use it. It's so <laughs> nice. You get to stay on Instagram without having to see people talk about things you don't want to talk about. Like even though social media has a lot of power over us, like it was made with our like interests in mind and you don't have to be a slave to your social media. Like if you don't like something, you can scroll past it. If you don't want to see something, you can tap past it. Like that's how social media was designed. Um, and like, obviously it's harder to have been done, but I really think like, if you try, like it's very easy to just not put yourself in triggering situations. I honestly think like college off season is the best time to just invest in yourself. Like you just grind mm. it on how many essays, like staffs of this, CSS that, like just take some time to just stop thinking about other people. Like take a little Instagram detox if you need to, like go read some books, go journal, go outside. Like now is the time to focus back on yourself because you just gave so much of yourself to this process. So yeah, that's what I would say you should do about navigating social media. Oh yeah. You dropped some gems, girl. <laughs> yes. Okay. So what about the free social media first? Like, yeah, literally muting exists, blocking exists. Don't feel like, oh, I'm being so mean if I mute this person, if I block this person, if I unfollow. No, you're not. Like, it's about you. Okay. Don't worry about how the other person feels. If you feel like, or if you feel like you have to deactivate your account in general or just delete the app, do it. Like, don't just keep doing things for the sake of everybody else is doing it. If it's hurting you, just like cut it out altogether. And it's only time you don't, I'm not saying delete it forever. Don't have social media live under a rock for your life. I'm not saying doing that. Like it's just a few months, but the time is over. You can go back to it if you want. Or if you still want to be on social media just to like see what's going on, or you just are a social media person. Yeah. Muting exists. If you see this other person just every day, they're talking about something college related mute that person like it's it's fine like I'm telling you it's fine it's actually it's more than okay it's amazing so please do it if you need to do it and I think in general just I think when you do come across it accidentally like okay it just comes someone's talking about it I feel like you know I think first if you feel like oh like your reactions are really negative just kind of sit with yourself and just remind yourself like this is this person's time and my time will come just keep telling yourself that don't feel like yeah you just have to keep reminding yourself that during that process you know like okay good for that person um and my time will come too you know and you don't have to post people I know people feel like they have to post every other friend or every person they know like you don't have to do that shit if you don't want to and if your friend's going to be mad at that, then that's their business. That's their you don't business. Have to, <laughs> you don't have to do that. But yeah, I think that's a good mantra to tell yourself because jealousy is common. Of course, everyone has is jealous of something. People that say they're not are liars. People are jealous of something. But it's all about what you do with those feelings. Like you were alluding to, like, you can't control what other people do, but you can control how you react. And if your first reaction is, uh, oh, that's fine. But it's like your second reaction. What do you do after that? If you're going to be praying for this person downfall because they got into a school that you didn't get into, like, that says a lot more about you that's than the other person. Like, don't do that. You know, let's all try. We're in a really tough time right now. Let's all support each other. But if you feel jealous, that's OK. That's cool. But just remind yourself, my time will come. My time will come. Yay for that person. But my time will come. Simple. And I think outside of like Instagram avoid okay so for me I really liked the college decision reaction videos especially if it was from black people like I got excited yes. yay I would live vicariously through them and I'm like yes you yes. go you go my Where brother you go you go yeah sometimes I'm <laughs> it made me tearing up like you go brother you go sister yes getting into college or whatever um but for me, I did not like the stats videos. I avoided those videos like the plague, yeah, especially if it's a too. school that I really like was waiting for. An ex like, especially if it was Ivy Leagues or like just a top school that I was waiting on. It just made me feel so shitty because like their scores are usually very high, like 1500s or like 30 something like ACT. 
they usually have, I didn't do any APs and they usually did like 10 or something. And then they usually did so many things with their life and their essay would be so beautiful. And then that would make me feel like crap. Like, well, I didn't do those things. So will I even get in? I would say avoid them, but if they help you during the like application process, go for it. You like it. I love it. But if you, I feel like you should avoid it. I feel you should avoid it while you're waiting because it just makes you second guess everything you did and you're just doing the best that you can. So yeah, I don't know if you agree with that. Yeah, I agree 100%. I actually think those videos are like completely useless if I'm being honest. Like um, every applicant is different. Like honestly, the college admissions process is definitely very discombobulated. And yeah. to some extent, it's not even really the fault of these schools because how are you supposed to choose like 600 out of like tens of thousands of applicants? There's something like something has to give. And so like when you see these videos, it's like, oh, I did this at and third. It's like, okay, that's you. Like you probably live like in some random state that like is far away from where I live. You went to some school, like we are competing for the same seat, but we're also not, if that makes sense. Like when colleges say that they consider it holistically, like they actually do because they have no choice. Like when it comes down to it, a lot of the applicants are similar. And so like something that benefits one applicant may not benefit you. And then something Mm -hmm. that benefits you may not benefit someone else. Like you can't really, it's literally impossible to compare yourself to other people who are in this cycle because it's always like some random thing that helps someone else get in over you. And also like considering like application years too, like my year, like if I see any videos talking about, oh, like class of 2021, like this is what I did to get, I don't want to hear it because our year was so random. Like it was online, like test optional this, like you cannot like the applicant cycle for our year was so drastically different than it is for other years that like people who got in this year may not have gotten in other years and vice versa. Like every year, every cycle, every applicant is completely different. And so like hearing even if you if you even if you get the stats that like someone in those videos did that doesn't mean you get in and it like works the same way like I just don't think that those videos are helpful to anyone because it's like that's how you got in that's literally all it is that's how you got in that's not necessarily going to help someone else get in yeah exactly it's really all by the grace of God is by chance it's by luck like it's by all those things like it's really and of course your grades they ate your test scores are probably really good your essay probably made someone cry you know what I mean but like they like you said you're they're looking at thousands of people and only picking like a small percentage so because that's how much space they have so they have to be cutting out people that were probably would do great in the school but they just maybe they just don't have the space for it so don't feel like literally those things is kind of bs I mean like if they motivate you while you're writing your application cool but like it's just not helpful when you're waiting because you already did everything you had to do. Yeah. There's no need to second guess when everything's been done. And like you said, you can't control what the accounts, like the admissions people, what they do, you know? So yeah, that's what I say. I would say avoid those things. Like it's really you, whatever you get is just what you get. So don't feel like you have to do exactly what the other person did because everyone is so different. Like everyone wrote a different essay than someone else. Everyone had different supplements and some like wrote different supplements to something else. Everyone had are in different schools and something else. And that also determines like how your grades look like everyone is just different. And especially like you said, we're in a very, very new and interesting time with the pandemic. Like I was applying before the pandemic and I know that what I did or what um, how my grades look are probably if I applied now, maybe would be so different. Maybe I wouldn't get into some places. Maybe I would have. And now it's just so everyone is, it's just running. Everyone's just running on vibes. Everyone is really just (laughs) trying to figure out no one knows what's going on, you know? So don't like know that this is also an interesting time. And every, even the admissions people themselves are trying to figure out how to do this. So yeah, just keep all those things in consideration, but I say avoid those things um, if you can, but yeah, in terms of the, um, when you talked about friends or just people at school and also your parents, you talked about that and the pressures that might be put upon you from those people. How would you protect your mental health from those things? Yeah, that's really hard. Um, I think, well, with your friends, I would say you have to set boundaries. Um, 
not even just with college apps, but in general, like, for example, when we finished um, finals last quarter, like a few of us went on like these career tracks and I considered it like, I'm like on a little trip right now. Like I'm in a different city. I'm living my best life right now. I don't want to hear about grades. Like, cause grades were coming out and all my friends are like, oh yeah, yeah. I got this and this and I was like, I don't want to hear it. I literally don't like, I'm not necessarily stressed about it, but it's like now is not the time to be talking about that. Like there's a time for everything. And like, I think that approach like definitely works for college app season too. Like, cause some people just can't, don't have anything else to talk about, I guess. Or like, it's like consuming them. So they just can't stop talking about it. And like, that's not really their fault, but they don't have to like poison you with that. So if you're surrounded by people who just won't stop talking about college, like you have the right to be like, I don't want to hear about that. Like, can we talk about something else? Or if you're not, if you don't want to be that direct, you can change the topic in other ways, but don't like, yeah, you don't have to force yourself to listen to that. The parents, yeah, honestly, I really haven't figured that one out. Like, I guess if you have parents where you can set boundaries, try and do that in, you know, obviously a respectful way. But with parents who don't respect boundaries, Honestly, Rachel, you're gonna have to take that one because I really don't know. I'm still trying to figure that out. Like, yeah, sometimes parents can be like, even though they want the best for you, sometimes they express it in ways that are not the best for your mental health. And I guess the way I do it is I just try to survive. Like, I just try to cope. Like, you can't really tell them stop talking, obviously. So you kind of just let them talk. And then you have to like, kind of console yourself, like remind yourself, like you're doing this for you. Like, or do whatever makes you happy after you have to listen to your parents and all of their like pressures and stuff because you can't really stop them. Oh yeah. <laughs> I guess uh, I guess I'll take the parent. I'll I'll take the parent one, but with the friends thing and in general setting boundaries is super important. Not just during this time like you said, but life in general. You cannot just have everyone have access to you whenever they want. Like you are the owner of your soul you are the owner of your body like so if you I'm also this type of person like even now to this day in my senior year of college self like if people talk about grades and all that crap I stay away from that shit like especially after like the test because I'm still I got some imposter syndrome I'm working through you know I'm still like got some anxious thoughts in me you know we're not perfect people. We go through those things. And so to pr- protect my mental health, I'm always just like, okay, I literally, people will be on the group chat. Yeah, I'm great. Da, da, da. My, I'm not talking. My phone is down. Like I'm like watching a YouTube video or something or sleeping. Like I'm not looking at that. And then I engage with it later. Or if you're in person and people are doing that, you could just walk away or be like, hey, can we change the subject? Like, I really, I don't know my, I don't really want to talk about my grades. I'm just kind of just want to talk about something else and if they don't respect that once again they're not your friends like because your friends would respect if you want to change direction if you want to change the conversation um but yeah setting boundaries is like really important um it reminds you that yes I have control over my life a little bit like I can control my own reality a little bit um yeah and it's just important for your mental health you know not to just have every thought every person everything like have access to you so yeah setting boundaries is really important in terms of and that's through the communication as well you have to communicate for the boundaries to be set people cannot read your mind you can't just be feeling upset like (laughs) you're talking about this and then you're saying nothing like they don't know what it is until you say something so you have to communicate and of course you could be respect you could be respectful and direct don't feel like you have to be mean you know just do it politely but yeah so setting boundaries in terms of the parents it is important to set boundaries with your parents but I know that's not possible for everybody because everyone's parents are different um I honestly think it's just about okay so there's two there's two ways so first is like communication if you're like communic, I think it's important to communicate like certain things that you're feeling during this process there your parents are also or your guardian is also a part of the process with you so I think it's important to communicate certain things like if they're very pressuring you about oh I want to hear what's going on was this was that did you apply like just be like hey I don't really want to talk about that right now um got a lot going on could we talk about it later or something I'm just not really in the mood for that if you don't mind you know And I know some parents are just very, what do you mean? You're in my house. You have to be telling me I'm the one paying the tuition, got to be paying this tuition. What do you mean you're being so private? You know what I mean? So I think 
when you're in those situations where you really have no control over like what's being said or what you do, I think it's really important to turn to your friends, turn to other people in your life that could, you know, just provide support, provide love for you. Um, whether you have siblings, the older siblings or siblings that are helpful or friends, cousins, whatever, people that are just going to be there to support you, to listen to you no matter what. I know that that's, I see that helpful for other people. Like my sister is a senior in high school right now. Hey girl, if you're listening. And, <laughs> and I know that sometimes my parents could be a little extra in when applying, while she's applying to schools and stuff. And I know she's been really just pouring her heart to me, heart out to me about, you know, things. And I'm trying to just be listening and be encouraging. It's really important to have people like that. I think that's really hard to deal with the application process alone and then have like very intense parents on top of that. So I'd say a good, if you can't really set those boundaries um, due to your family situation, make sure you have people in your life that will support you, will listen to you and will encourage you throughout that time. And this whole process, I say this and feel like in almost every episode, but college is for you. I know it feels like it may be for your parent or like for someone else because someone else is paying for it or, you know, you have all these cultural um, factors going on, but like college is for you. You're going to be in there. Is your parent going to be there with you? No. Is your best friend going to be there? Well, actually, sometimes, but they're not going to be taking the courses with you. (laughs) They're not going to be taking the courses with you. You know, they're not going to be doing the same degree you're doing. So you just have to keep reminding that, you know, like, yeah, don't feel like you have to do what other people are doing. I know sometimes you don't have control, like with finances, you need to just pick the cheapest option and things like that. But remember that you control, you can control your own reality to an extent, whatever school you go to, you can control the opportunities you get. You can control the friends you get your, your parents, your teachers, your friends, they can't control those things. So remember that this is all for you. You have to think about your best interests first before you put other thing, people's interests into consideration. So yeah, my, I went to a whole nother tangent, but basically <laughs> have if your parent's situation is intense or weird, just have a support system. Have people in your life that you can count on and talk to. And I think our last little question for today is, you talked a little about um, investing yourself during that time. Like if you block social media, just pouring into yourself, um, working on when you're working on supplements, like doing other activities that make you happy to manage, you know, that time. Could you give some tips or some activities um, that people can do to like relax, to protect their mental health, to have a good time, to invest in themselves? Yeah, like I think for me, I spent a lot of time like I think I started like dancing more around that time and that kind of like sparked like a whole thing of me getting back into dancing and that was like a really good way to take my mind off of things um but in general just stuff like that like stuff that makes you happy stuff that makes you feel good stuff that doesn't require you to like continue burning yourself out just stuff that yeah stuff that makes you happy like there's like so many things you can do you can read write dance Thing, spend time with your friends go outside like try new food start cooking one of my friends did that she like got back into cooking yeah just like anything really and I think like the hardest part is just doing it but like I just try and think remind myself like how I'll feel after I've already done it versus like how I feel now just like sitting in my bed thinking about this school and that school like you have to push yourself to do better for yourself because it's very easy to just be miserable during that time. And like, we all deserve to not have to feel miserable. So yeah, I think like that's a really good time to just like practice taking care of yourself because taking care of yourself requires practice. Like it's like a skill that you have to get better at. And yeah, like you need it anyways, during that time, especially. So might as well. Yes, that was beautiful. I don't have anything to add. Like, (laughs) yes. (laughs) <laughs> investing yourself the self-care we love to hear it we love to see it uh so I have nothing to add that was beautiful do you do you have <laughs> do you, I can be so dramatic anyways do you have it's an any in you. yeah <laughs> do you have any last words for the people especially for the seniors out there 
going through this time? Yeah, if your parents are bugging, get an adult involved. Like, that's literally what mm, I have to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I have yeah, to get my church pastor do. involved. Like, uh, yeah, that's how bad it was. That. If you have to do that, do what you got to do. Because in the end, like Rachel said, you are the one who's going to school. Like, your parents will try it. Well, not all parents. Some parents will try and convince you that because they're paying it, their say is the final say. And, of course, their input matters. Like, if you're choosing a school that's $30,000, when you go into a school that's five thousand dollars like i feel like mm. have some sense, right but like if you know two schools are around the same price and you really like one but like one happens to be further like you're gonna be there it's your experience like experience is so important and like in the end your parents are scared like that's really yeah, what it is a lot of the time the you want to go to school far away and it's fair for them to be scared especially for immigrant parents because they went through a lot coming to a new place and they I guess they don't want to see you go through the same but in the mm-hmm. end you have to like appeal to that fear and remind them like that being afraid is just holding you back from like you being the happiest and best version of yourself and that's not what they want to do they want you to be the happiest and best version of yourself so try and convince them of that and if you can't that's when you bring in the pastor the teacher the guy <laughs> I don't know who it is sometimes these adults only want to listen to other adults so just do what you got to do to like ensure your happiness in the end yes Ooh, i wish i heard this advice when i was (laughs) during that time sheesh but yes amazing beautiful think that's all yeah that's all for today and all my questions thank you so much juliet you really dropped some gems for us like i really wish like my younger self is like screaming right now like it's like wow (laughs) like i really wish i heard all this stuff during that time so thank you so much and i hope y'all wrote took some notes listen to it again if you have to because she was spitting right here but yeah thank you so much for (laughs) thank you so much for coming I really appreciate you for being here um where can the people find you if you're working on something or if you just want to put your socials out there well my instagram is at underscore juliet daniel curly is deactivated because you know Mm. self-care mental health right but yeah when I'm back on instagram y'all can follow me there all right thank you so much Juliet for being here really appreciate you and yeah wishing you all the best with school and everything um, thanks for yeah. having me babe of course thank you for coming Our first culture shout out of the year goes to the College for All program. So College for All was established in 2020 and is a free college guidance program that helps students through the college process with the help of their CFA Scholars program. They offer application help, personalized list building, essay edits, scholarship finding resources, and exclusive webinars. So this program literally represents everything I stand for. Like everything they represent is the reason why I am doing what I'm doing. And I love everything they're doing. They're helping so many students in all across the U.S. right now. And they're really doing a great job. I really enjoy their Instagram. It's full of like scholarships that you could apply for and information on colleges, even some that maybe you haven't heard of before. So yeah super informative they are really doing the lord's work right now so if you are a junior in high school right now you live in the u.s and need college guidance apply for the cfa scholar program is super easy you don't need to have like a 4.0 or anything like literally just apply and you could do so by clicking on the link in their ig bio and their ig is at college for all program And if you are in college already, like me, and you want to be a mentor, if that's something you're interested in, then you could apply there using the link in their bio as well. So yeah, love them, follow them. They're really great. If you want a shout out, feel free to hit me up on Instagram at College for the Culture, and you could be featured next time. so much for tuning in to 
this episode. If you liked what you heard, subscribe to the podcast and give us a five-star rating and review. We'd really appreciate it if you do. For more content or suggestions on what to talk about next, follow us on IG at College for the Culture. If you want to consult with me about anything college related, email me at collegefortheculture at gmail.com. Take care of yourselves, y'all. And don't forget that we see y'all and we got y'all. Bye.